Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. I'm here today at the Royal Armouries, the National Firearms Centre in Leeds, England. And I'm here today courtesy of Ares Armament Research Services. And today we're going to take a quick look at this interesting pump shotgun. This dates to 1891, when it was patented by Colonel George Fosbury. Now you may recognize Fosbury's name from the Webley Fosbury automatic revolver, which was certainly a notable design or invention of Fosbury's, but the invention of his that really did him the most good was a choke system called the Paradox, which allowed uh, large bore shotguns to fire both slug, single projectile slug, and also shot with relatively equal effectiveness, which was something new at the time. Anyway, that invention made him a lot of money. The Webley Fosbury revolver was not really commercially successful. And this 1891 patent shotgun was not the least bit successful. This never took off. Um, British sportsmen were never really interested in pump-action shotguns. Uh, in the UK they just did not take off. The early Winchesters, the Spencers, none of those guns were ever popular over here uh, early on. What Fosbury put together though is interesting, because it has a six-lug rotating bolt that is extremely reminiscent of what Eugene Stoner would use in the AR-15, and of course, before him, what jo uh, Melvin Johnson used in the Johnson rifles and light machine guns. So let's take a closer look at that. So this particular example of this gun has been through a number of rebuilds. It actually began life as a rifle, not a shotgun, and I believe it began with a fixed five-round magazine. And I believe it was then modified to have this rather goofy trigger guard extension which I think initially housed a shotgun magazine um, loaded from the top, because of course you can't load it from the bottom. But suffice to say, the action is what we're particularly interested in today. It is a slide action, so there is a handle here on the bottom, which is connected via this connecting rod. There are two rails that are embedded into the stock. The slide handle has these two metal, uh, well this metal plate that grips onto those rails to keep it in track and keep it from jumping, and then it is connected to this guide rod, which runs up here, and connects to the bolt. So when I cycle this open, there is a cam right built into this that's going to rotate the bolt open, and then it comes all the way back. And doesn't that look quite a lot like an AR-15 bolt? Now the lugs are rounded, and there are six of them, but clearly we have the exact same idea that Johnson and Stoner used. Note there's an extractor up here, there's a plunger ejector down at the bottom. If we take a look at the breech of the gun, you can see that it has that exact same style. Looks just like an AR-15 uh, breech block, or rear trunnion, barrel extension, whatever, you, whatever term you want to use. And when I run this forward, these lugs are going to slide nicely into those recesses. And then this cam, cam path pulls this plate down, rotates the bolt head in place, and very securely locks the action. There is not much in the way of markings on this gun, but if you look on the top of the barrel, you will see it marked Winchester Repeating Shotgun 1909 model. This is clearly not a Winchester shotgun. Um, actually, what Fosbury did was take a Winchester 1909 model shotgun barrel and fit it to his receiver and action. We have a couple very small marks on the top of the trunnion there. And that is it for markings on this thing. There's nothing else. This was strictly a uh, highly repeatedly modified prototype, really, um, an attempt to get sales in any number of different guises. Whenever someone asks me a question about, you know, what was the first blank, question, those questions are always difficult to answer, because it seems there's kind of always someone who did something before the one that you're aware of. And this is a really good example of that. People look at where did the AR-15 come from, and they see, well, it obviously took the bolt design from the Johnson rifle and Johnson light machine gun. Well, you know what? Johnson wasn't the first person to come up with that idea of a multi-lug rotating bolt, as evidenced by this. Uh, Fosbury designed this 50 years before Johnson was working on it. Now, did this gun influence Johnson and then Colt? 
or Johnson and then Stoner? I doubt it. Um, this gun was of such limited commercial application. They only made a handful of these things trying to get them onto the market. They never went into mass production. I would say it's very doubtful that Melvin Johnson ever saw or was aware of one of these. What it is, however, an indicator of is that the good ideas will come back multiple times. It doesn't require, it's not one person who's going to come up with that idea. Multiple people will come up with a good idea simultaneously and independently. Great example of it here. And that's part of what makes it really difficult to track down questions like what was the first blank, the, the first use of any given innovation. Anyway, if you're interested in uh, some detailed high-res pictures of this cool shotgun, take a look at Armament Research Service's blog entry um, on the Hoplite, which has pictures. And also, if you're interested in small arms research, get in contact with the Royal Armories. Their NFC collection is not open to the public, but it is available by appointment. And if you're doing small arms research on early firearms actions like this, or a multitude of other subjects, they have a fantastic collection that you should come take a look at. Thanks for watching.